Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an adrenal fatigue recovery ninja and today I want to talk to you about adrenal fatigue and insomnia. There are a lot of reasons why you may have a problem with falling asleep and staying asleep and in this edition of your adrenal fix I want to talk to you about neurotransmission. So we have a lot of neurotransmitters. These are the the chemicals that your brain uh, cells make in order for learning and feeling calm and excitation and memory and cognition and so there are categories of neurotransmitters some that excite us and make us feel pleasure and then some that um, calm us down and so typically when we are not able to sleep effectively we can have some neurotransmitters that go awry and there's reasons for that. They may not be manufactured properly. We may not be getting enough protein. A lot of, a lot of vegetarians, um, they don't get enough protein. And these, these hormones are synthesized through proteins like phenylalanine and tyrosine and tryptophan and arginine. Um, so if you're not getting enough protein in your diet, that could be one major reason. Um, another reason is that when we have stress, we upregulate our IDO pathway. What does that mean? It means when we have inflammation, when we have stress, we steal from Peter to pay Paul. Or we steal from the raw materials that we would otherwise use to make these neurotransmitters, namely 5-HTP that helps us sleep, and we steal away the raw materials to make quinolonic acid. And what that does is that helps produce an inflammatory response, and that helps put out the inflammatory response. So if we're constantly under stress and constantly inflamed, then we are going to steal the raw materials that would otherwise go and make neurotransmitters. And so you can see things like anxiety, um, focus and concentration issues, insomnia, not being able to sleep, a lot of pain. So that's typically when we see some neurotransmitter issues. One of the amazing tests that we can do is we can do something called an organic acid test that will look at these, these byproducts or these metabolites to see where you may have some deficiencies. We also do a neurobiogenic amine test where we can look at the different proteins and what their production is and see if they're low or they're high. Just like in life and everything, if you have too much of something or too little of something, it may be impl implying that it's being made but it's not being broken down effectively or it may be broken down too quickly and not made uh, in a certain relationship. So very, very important to look at neurotransmitters. The last thing I wanted to say is there is a methylation component to it too. Um, and necessary, especially with MTHFR um, or something called DHFR, which is the same pathway that we see with MTHFR. Now, if this is not um, working effectively and it's, it's mutated, it has a plus plus or a plus minus, it's not going to recycle um, tetrahydrobiopterin into biopterin. And when it doesn't do that, now we don't have the first ingredient that's necessary for those neurotransmitters to be activated and to make the dopamine and the adrenaline and the ability to sleep. So it doesn't matter if you have a stress response, you have a methylation component which you're not able to utilize. And a lot of the times we have the perfect storm where we have a genetic stress response. We're not eating enough protein. We have an upregulation of our IDO problems and we're stressed out all the time. When that happens, then you're not sleeping. So um, hopefully you got a lot out of this video. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen. Make sure you give me a thumbs up, a share. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out my Facebook page at Adrenal Fatigue Recovery. And make sure you check out my blog at AdrenalFatigueSociety.com. I look forward to helping you with your adrenal fatigue and insomnia nightmare. Thank you so much.